I went from making $7.35 an hour to making $153K as a data analyst. And no, I didn't get lucky. I learned these five unethical negotiation skills. Level one might get you like 5K more, but level five might help you double your salary in one year, which is exactly what I did. Today, I'll be sharing my entire salary progression as a data analyst and the negotiation tactic that I used at each salary jump. Stay till the very end because I used a bonus level six that most people don't talk about and it got me $153,000 a year. The first First thing you need to know about salaries and negotiation is that it absolutely is a game. And if you do not learn how to play the game, you're not gonna win and you're not gonna make more money. About 55% of people don't even negotiate their salaries and they're leaving money on the table. And I know this because recruiters never offer the best salary first. The first offer is never the best offer because they anticipate you're gonna negotiate. They know you're gonna ask for more money and negotiate, so they always leave room for that. So if they know that their max budget for the role is 150K, they might offer you 130K. So that way, if you negotiate, they have room to say yes and give you more money. If they offer you 150K right off the bat and you ask for more money, they have no room to go up because of the budget. So you should always negotiate because if not, you're always leaving money on the table. People don't negotiate for many reasons. I think a lot of times people are scared. It's kind of awkward, honestly, like it's very awkward, but you just have to learn how to embrace it and just suck it up and do it anyways. And I think the other thing is that people just truly don't know how to negotiate and how to do it, which is what I'm gonna teach you today. I'm not just gonna teach you how, but I'm gonna teach you how to do it well, because the reality is that when people negotiate, they receive on average 18.83% higher on their salary, an 18.83 increase just by negotiating. I'm telling you, there's always money on the table. Literally. Now we're gonna unlock negotiation tactic number one, which is the network. I was a broke college student making literally 7.35 an hour and I could like barely pay my bills with that. And I knew that I needed a higher paying job, but I also wanted some industry experience to put on my resume. I was in grad school getting my master's in business analytics. And one day this company and these two guys who worked there came by looking for a data analytics intern and they were paying $17 an hour. Maybe $17 an hour doesn't seem like that much, but to make that as an intern still in school, that was over double what I was currently making. So I was ecstatic about the position, not only to get experience and, you know, use my data analyst skills in the field, but also for the salary increase, $7.35 to $17 an hour. I mean, that's life-changing difference. I got this job by networking and connecting on LinkedIn because when these guys came by to talk about the position and see who was interested, there were five other guys there and they just kind of thought like that their experience would speak for themselves and whatever. They were honestly kind of cocky. They didn't really do the extra work. They didn't stay after. They just, you know, came in and left. Me, on the other hand, I was schmoozing in. I was asking questions. I stayed after. I showed my interest. I also told them a little bit about my education background and like the things I'd worked on before. And then after I found them both on LinkedIn and sent them a connection request and said, hey, it was really great to meet you today. I'm super excited about the opportunity for this position. I would love to learn more about the role. And that message right there was my golden ticket in. Only two people got interviews for the position. I was one of them and I ultimately ended up getting the job. Later on, they told me that the reason why is because they could tell I really wanted it and I kept putting myself out there and they wanted someone who was eager and really gonna care about the position. So it just shows you sometimes it's not always about your skills or your education or your experience. Sometimes it's just truly putting yourself out there and actually caring. And that's why level one is networking. It's not what you know, it's who you know. By the way, if you wanna land your dream data analytics job faster, I have a complete system that covers everything you need. My free three-step data analytics roadmap covers all the skills you need, how to build a portfolio, and more importantly, how to position yourself for six figure data analyst roles. Grab it below and now let's unlock level two of salary negotiation, which is anchor high. This is the first tactical skill that you can use if you're new to negotiation. I had done my internship for $17 an hour and when it got to the end of the school year and I was graduating with my master's, I was kind of waiting on that full-time offer. They said that their budget for the role was 60 to 65,000, which was a little lower than I was wanting. I was wanting at least 70,000 for this salary, but I knew if I asked for 70,000, I would get less than that. So what I had to do was I had to anchor high and choose a number higher than I actually wanted because of course they're gonna counter me back down and give me less than I asked for. So I didn't just anchor high and choose a random number. I actually used research. I used the market salary and the way that I did that is by using the average salary for my master's program. The average salary for graduates in my master's program at the time was $76,000 a year. So when they said our budget is 60 to 65, I said, hmm, based on my market research, the average salary 
salary for my master's program is 76,000. Is there anything we can do to get a little closer to that number? They came back with 71.5, which honestly is not a bad salary for your first data analyst job. And it was higher than I was initially really hoping for. So when you're negotiating, always anchor higher than you actually want because they're always gonna counter you back down one more time. And don't just choose a random number out of thin air. Come with market research and show that you did that research. Another tidbit for this too, is that sometimes you do have to embrace the awkwardness and the silence. The more you over explain, well, I want this because this, and I have bills to pay and I have 10 kids and a farm and I need more money because I have loans. No, don't over explain. Do not bring in your personal life. Say what you need to say and then stop, shut up, stop talking and let that number sit. Based on the market research, people in this job position earn X amount. Can we meet closer to that number? Zip, zip and sit. It's gonna be silent. It's gonna be awkward. Embrace it. If you talk too much, you will talk yourself out of a higher salary. So just sit, let it be awkward. Make them do the talking. Now we're ready to unlock level three, which is the evidence unlock. And this is where I started to get really strategic and really driving my salary growth and advocating for myself. At this point, I had received an annual raise of like, I don't know, three or 4%. So my salary at this time was about 73,000. And I had also gotten a title promotion to senior data analyst, but they didn't actually give me like a raise with my promotion, which a little bit of a red flag, but the title was great. I, you know, I took it at the time, but after a year with that new title, I was doing so much. I had a direct report. I was also doing all the analytics for our funding round and leading all the stakeholder meetings and the weekly report with the executives. I had a lot of responsibility and I was like, y'all need to be paying me more than $73,000 a year. But I said it professionally. I ended up negotiating a 30% raise internally by advocating for myself and showing my value. And again, I backed it with market research. I put together a one page document of all of my accomplishments and big business impact items that I had done over the past year. I summarized into a document and I even quantified like how much time I saved, how much money I made for the company, the fact that I was doing all these things that someone would do in a leadership role. And then at the very bottom, I put the market research. My market research was on websites like Indeed, Glassdoor, Fishbowl, all those sites said that as a senior analyst in my town, I should be making like 90K to like 120K, which I'll be honest, felt like a lot to ask for. And I was really scared because at the time I was making 73 and even thinking about getting a raise to 90 is a pretty big jump. So I was kind of nervous how this would all go down. But my one pager of accomplishments was just undeniable. They literally couldn't say no because I think it put together all the impact I had had on the company over the past year. And I think they knew that I would leave if I didn't get like, you know, fair pay. And they increased my salary to $95,000 a year, which again, is a huge bump from 73 for an internal negotiation. And they boosted my job title to data analytics manager. So that way they could like justify that big of a raise, which was also great for my career too, because I got to manage two people and have another elevated title. And that was something completely driven by me. I don't know if I would have gotten that raise or that promotion if I didn't self-advocate and track all of my accomplishments throughout the year. So sometimes collecting evidence and self-advocating can really pay off, literally. My time at that company came to an and when I realized I was ready for new growth opportunities, I just wanted to work somewhere else and try something new and grow. When I left, I was looking for another senior analyst type of role, but I didn't really know what my value was because I was making 95 at the time, but a lot of other roles had higher salaries. And I was like, oh my gosh, am I worth that much? <laughs> no, probably not. You know, I was hoping for like maybe 115K, maybe 120, but I was like, there's no way someone's gonna pay me more than that. Little old me? Like the imposter syndrome was real. I did not feel confident in asking for too much money, but they paid me more. This is where shit gets real. Level four is the job hop unlock. You're gonna wanna write this one down for sure. This is where I learned the lesson that companies will always find more budget and pay you more to bring you into the company and acquire you as an employee than they will if you negotiate internally for a raise. That is why job hopping is so valuable and you should be job hopping every two to three years at least because if you're staying at a company for five years or 10 years, they're just gonna give you an annual 3% or 5% raise and you're not gonna get these big increases that you're gonna get from job hopping and moving companies, especially when you leave all the negotiation for the very end of the interview process when you literally already have an offer in your hands. They've already invested so much 
time, energy, and resources into interviewing you and getting you through the interview process. They don't wanna lose you and have to like start over with someone brand new and start over their search over $10,000 or $20,000. Like that's not that much money to most companies. So they're gonna be willing to spend more money to get you to come on board. I did this by making myself very valuable. Job searching was kind of like dating. I was trying out like five different options at once, kind of leading them all on, going through all of these interview processes and basically making them all think that they were my top choice and telling all of them about each other, which put a lot of urgency on the decision and then also prevented me from getting a low ball offer because I told them that I was interviewing at other places too and also getting close to the end with other companies. And then it made those other companies jealous. Like, oh my gosh, she's in high demand. She must be really great. We need to hurry. We need to give her a good offer so we can get her. So if they ask if you're interviewing other places, always, always, always say yes. Feel free to drop like some competitor names and feel free to say that you're further along in the interview process with the other companies because you want to create urgency and you want to create demand. That's how you're going to get good offers. Stay toxic, my friends. So little old me with imposter syndrome, I thought I might get a salary for like 120, but I ended up getting a salary for 130 with a $9,000 annual bonus. Spoiler alert, I quit that job in less than a year, so I never got the bonus. Oops. Before we get to level six, which is my bonus hack, we have level five now, which is the interview unlock. I call this the interview unlock because I think when you have really good interviews and you interview super well and they just love you, it gives you so much negotiation leverage. I negotiated from my $130,000 salary to my $153,000 salary, another pretty big increase because I interviewed really well. Obviously I did all the right things. You know, I had all the right skills. I passed my live coding interview. I was job hopping again. You know, I have a master's degree and I took my graduation years off my resume, which you absolutely want to do, especially if you're earlier on in your career or, you know, you're a woman because you don't want to get judged for your age and have them think you have less experience than you actually do. It's also a really good way that forces them to judge you based off of your interviews, your experience and your skills instead of just looking at your graduation year. So by the time I got to this negotiation, I was at a point in my career where I had gone through a few months of interviewing and job searching and then six months months before that, I was also interviewing and job searching. So I was a well-oiled interview machine. I had truly done so many interviews, so many different types of interviews, good interviews, bad interviews, ugly interviews, successful interviews, failed interviews, unhinged interviews, illegal interviews. I had truly seen it all. So by the time I got to this point, I had already practiced answers to pretty much any question they could ask me. Literally any behavioral question, tell me about a time where, oh, I already have my answer ready. I've already answered this a million times. Even the live coding questions. Can you do this in SQL? Yeah, I've already done it a million times. So I truly believe that I got the high end of the salary range for this position, 153K, because I interviewed very well. I think I was very confident. I was very just sure of myself. I had answers for everything. And I really think that I just interviewed well and I was able to present myself as a more, you know, experienced and professional person simply because I was confident in my answers. And I think I had good answers too. She's an icon. So yeah, I learned a lot of salary negotiation skills really quickly. And the time frame for me going from 73K to 153K was only 11 months, which is actually like insane insane. And sure, maybe it's not ideal to internally negotiate your salary, quit, go to a new job, quit that one in four months and go to a new job in 11 months. Like that's kind of a lot. It was very exhausting and it was very tiring, but I over doubled my salary. So it was kind of hard to regret it. I didn't regret it at all. And finally, we're at my bonus hack, which is level six. And that is knowing when to walk away. For so long, I kept chasing these salary increases. It gave me like an endorphin hit and a confidence boost every time. It makes you feel feel good, but after a few paychecks, you kind of get used to it. And then you're like, hmm, what's next? How am I going to beat this? You know? So when I got to my job with 153K, I truly felt that I made it. But a year into that job, I'm already starting to think about the future. Like, do I have a promotion kind of coming up? Is there opportunity for me to grow here? Even though 153K is a great salary and a lot of money, I'm always thinking about those growth opportunities. So I started having those conversations with my manager, thinking that it would be similar to the time that I negotiated an internal raise. So I start thinking like, okay, what do I need to do? How do I be on track for this on this timeline? Thinking that I was doing all the right things, all the advice that I just got done telling you. And to be completely honest, without saying too much tea, I was pretty much told, nope, it's not gonna happen. There was no roadmap for me to have growth. It was just kind of a, no. <laughs> 
which for someone like me who's very goal oriented and really craves growth, I get really bored sitting in the same spot too long. So that was like a really tough thing for me to hear. And at that point, you have two options. You can stay and you can go. What I did is actually different than the advice I'm gonna give you. What I did was stay. I did a strategic stay because I knew that I wasn't gonna make a ton more money somewhere else. And I was also working on my side business and you know I had decent work-life balance and remote work. And I was like, it's just risky to throw all that away for just like a salary that's a little bit more somewhere else. And at that time I was relatively happy in that job. I didn't have too many complaints. And you know, with the work-life balance, I was able to log off every day at like 6 p.m. and work on my side gig, which, you know, is something I've been growing for a while and investing a lot of time, energy and money into. And now it's my full time job. So I'm really happy that I strategically stayed at that corporate job and invested so much in myself and my side business at the time. But unless you have some weird personal reason like I do, then I would advise you to walk away. Sometimes you just have to know when you need to walk away because a company is not valuing you and you don't have the growth and excitement that you need. If you're at a company for one to two years and you don't get a single raise or a promotion, and those conversations aren't even being had and entertained and there's no path for you to get a raise or promotion, red flag. So my biggest advice is being able to take your power back and walk away when you know it's the right decision for you. Because sometimes you might get told no and sometimes there are no opportunities for you to actually negotiate and grow your salary, even if you do all the right things and follow all the advice I gave you. Here's what happened. I just showed you the exact system that I use to go from 735 an hour to $153,000 a year. Most data analysts never get past level three. They accept whatever salary is offered, stay at a company too long and ultimately get stuck. But you're different. You watched to the very end, which means that you're ready to level up. And I'm proud of you. So here's what to do next. Go grab my free three-step data analytics roadmap below. It's in the description. It shows you exactly how to break into data analytics and how to position yourself for six-figure roles. The salary game is winnable. You just need the cheat codes. Sending you lots of big data energy. Bye.